Boom, we are back. Hello, welcome back to the Troop Podcast. I am your host, choreographer and trainer, Antoine Troop. On the Troop Podcast, we talk about everything in regards to training, creativity, and mindset so you can be your best self and help you do your best work. Today's podcast, we're going to be talking about the, the all, everything we're seeing with Nike and dancers. We're going to talk about IG Reels, creating content as a dancer. We're going to get into some questions from the community on creativity for stage, like how I tap into my creativity for stage. We're going to talk about networking, which is a big thing a lot of people don't talk about in the dance industry or at like classes, conventions and stuff like that. Networking is a big thing for your career. And we're also going to talk about patience, how to be patient when it comes to waiting for your big moment in your career, whatever, whatever that big moment, whatever that means for you, it's different for everybody. Some people want to tour. Some people want to be able to travel and teach for the first time. It's different for everybody. And we're going to get to it. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, this week, what's been on my mind a lot. I, I had a really great week. I feel like I danced a lot. I feel like I taught a lot. I uh, worked with KM. I worked with my company, Troop. We had an amazing session. Lainey Walker pulled up. If you don't know a Lainey Walker, get into her. Do your research. She's fly. She's fire. I have her dancing for Kehlani. Um, she also choreographs as well. She's really great. Uh, Eleni Walker came by and taught. I did a collab with Josh Price this week. Uh, that hopefully, we're going to teach it soon. That was really dope. That's somebody I respect and been watching like grow up pretty much. So we did a collab. I taught a master class at Millennium. That was so fun. Like the people that come out to my classes, much love. Like it's a dope community that's forming of like-minded individuals that really care about their training, love to train, love the art form. And also are just like good people. It's like everybody's working together. It's a good vibe, good energy. Class at Millennium this week was really incredible. Um, all right. So let me touch on some things that I feel like are going to be relevant to all of you that are tuning in. I know you all have been seeing everything that's going to be going down with Nike, Nike getting into dance. They just put out the first dance shoe, which I think is incredible. I know they collabed with, um, they worked with Kenjas on that and they have a partnership with, I see Paris Global has a partnership with Nike. I think it's really amazing. I think what it means to us and how it's relevant to you is I would literally just say, get ready because if the top brand in the world is going in this direction, you know, everybody else is going to follow suit soon after it, it right. Like they're, they, people have dabbled in it, but no one has put out a dance shoot. No one's going as maybe as hard as Nike to really work with dancers as more than just like entertainers, but actually contributing to product that is being put out into the marketplace. So I think you really need to study what's going on and figure out who they're choosing, why they're choosing the people that they're working with and figure out how you could be next, either whether it's a brand such as Nike or Adidas or Reebok or all the other brands are going to start tapping into dance. Um, so that's a major thing happening. That's a major thing. That's a major win for dance. And don't, I know a lot of people compare, they get on social media and they start comparing themselves. Like, I want that. I wish I had that. Why them? Why not me? Don't do that to yourself. Uh, just be excited for what's going to come for you. There's so many opportunities. Um, and we're going to talk more about that when it comes to patience and whatnot. But you should be excited because that just means there's going to be a lot more opportunities for you. Um, also, I want to talk about IG Reels. Um, I think it's really important and it's something you should start thinking about if you're not already posting the IG Reels. Um, I think you should really take it seriously. Um, Instagram is pushing it. And whenever the platform itself is pushing a new feature, you should get into it because they're going to also push the content that you are putting out. I actually just made my, like just made money for the first time from a reel. I, from my first one, it was my first attempt at doing it. And, um, I think I'm it is like make made like $175 off of this reel. That's like, uh, 14,000 views. So you can do the calculations on that, but that just inspired me. I'm not even too like caught up in the numbers and what that is. It just shows me like, okay, there's something here. This is possible. This is what's next. And for you, for me, for everybody in this industry, we have to be on top of what's next, what's happening, especially with every, uh, with everything being so digital now. And, and I, I know we're hearing everything about the, the metaverse which I'm like scared of and excited for and all the things. Uh, 
but if anything, I would just get familiar. You know, you don't have to like sell your ent entire life to these things, to these platforms, but I would be familiar because it is coming. It's coming. It's not even coming. It's here and it's now. So make sure you are getting educated and doing what you need to do. I'm, I've been doing research on NFTs, like all that kind of stuff. Um, you don't want to get, you don't want to get phased out, which easily happens to people who don't want to adapt to the way the world is going. So really get on those IG rails. And um, I know a lot of dancers when it comes to creating content, there's two things. Like one, your phone is amazing. You can buy a tripod, make sure you set it up right and it's lit well, uh, put the music over it, make sure you're using um, songs that are either one relevant I, I, I like to balance it. I don't want to just do the trendy songs. I'll do the trendy songs, but also I want to do just songs that I love that I really actually like really, really. And even with the trendy songs, I'm only doing, I'm only going to do the ones that I feel like an actual connection to, which I think a lot of stuff right now is actually like, it's some stuff I already honestly listen to. There's a lot of Afro songs that are trendy right now and it's stuff I was already choreographing to. So it works out perfectly for me. But either way, um, even if you're not too into what is trending, Make sure you do find music that you really, really connect to and you feel like you feel something from. Because if you feel something from it, it's going to be much easier for you to create to, to freestyle to or whatever. And it's probably going to relate a lot more to the audience that's watching as well. And if you're not going to be filming your own content, creating your own content, um, collaboration is always amazing. And uh, I think it's even more powerful, the impact, like, when you are collaborating with more people, whether it's videographers, dancers, whatever, I feel like once you do drop something, it feels like there's a community or a group of people pushing something more than just you by yourself. Um, and when it comes to collaborating, I actually was talking to videographer Shaboos, who's right here um, a little bit earlier about how the best practices for collaborating with, say, like a videographer. I know, especially, you know, a one-off video, maybe you can you know, save up the money or whatever to be able to put that out. But obviously all of us, consistency is everything. So when it comes to doing the ongoing thing with videos, it can come become pretty expensive. So me and Shabuz are kind of talking and he can go ahead and touch on that as a videographer. What's the best practices when you want to collaborate? The best practices is just to always be willing to help the other person. Everybody has bills, goals, and responsibilities. And if you can't help on the bills part, help them out with the responsibilities and the goals. Everybody's got their own thing that they want to do or that they need help doing. Don't fall short and not offer yourself if you don't have the money. There's so many ways to get into something because everybody needs help. Mm -hmm. So all you really got to do, I mean, and it's not going to be for everybody. Somebody may say no, and that's fine. You just got to keep it pushing, yep. keep it moving. But you find the person that you genuinely get along with, that you enjoy them and that you wouldn't mind helping them and you like their work, you can have a good relationship with them where they won't feel taken advantage of and they'll be down to help you because you've been down to help them. Absolutely. Agreed. Well said. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, okay. So I think let's go ahead and get into the next section. That's what's been on my mind. That's what's been going on this week. That's what I've been thinking about a lot. Um, now let's hear from the community. Let's get into some of the questions that have been submitted again. Um, you can always text the number on the screen and leave your question. Just make sure you text, text the, text the number with hashtag ask troop. It'll put you, it'll file you into this, um, group, this thread of text so I can easily find all of the questions. Also, you can leave questions in the comments and just put hashtag ask troop and that'll be easier for me. It'll catch my eye to see what questions, um, are relevant to all of you. I really want to be able to help as much as I can. So let's get into the questions for this week. This is from Taryn Brandt. I already, I'm going to just ask for your forgiveness in advance. If I'm messing up anybody's name, I'm going to try my best. But uh, Taryn Brandt asks, what are some of the different things you use to tap into creativity when it comes to creating choreography you need for stage? And since she said for stage, I'm going to speak specifically to stage. And I, the reason I say that, because when it comes to video it's going to be a little bit different or um uh yeah, it's pretty much just video or, or stage it's either going to be recorded or it's going to be live um so specifically 
for stage, um, I want to, first I want to kind of um, set the scene. And this is kind of like for me choreographing in general. I want to take myself somewhere mentally um, beyond just what, what the song is and what I'm hearing. I want to imagine, okay, um, what is the setting on stage look like? What are we wearing? Um, like, what is the overall mood? What colors come to mind? I really want to take myself to a place. What is the character? Um, and then that, that blends into the next thing is intention. How do I want the audience to feel? Whenever I'm choreogra choreographing at any given moment, I'm always thinking, how is the audience feeling throughout this entire performance? Right, whether it's a five minute set, a 15 minute set, an hour set, every second of that performance, I want to be, I want to be tuned in and aware of what are we giving? What is the emotion we're giving? What is the emotion we're drawing out of the audience? I don't want to just put empty moves, just a bunch of movement on stage. Anybody and everybody can do that. I want it to be meaningful. I want to be intentional with everything that I do. So I really want to listen to the song, understand what, what is the scene? What is it giving? What, what do I feel? What do I want the audience to feel? And how can I bring the lyrics to life? Especially, I'm not sure if Taryn, you're asking for um, whether it's like a company or something or an artist, but if, if it's going to be an artist that I'm working with, artists love their favorite thing is to go in a booth, make a song talking about something that's happened in their life, something that they're thinking about. Then when it comes, it's translated through the choreographer to the dancers. They step in that rehearsal. They see a physical representation of what they said and what they felt when they were in the booth. I think a mistake a lot of people make is they just ignore the lyrics. They ignore the intention of the song and they just go with what are the coolest moves that I can do every second of every lyric and beat of it it's 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 really not about that maybe maybe if you're competing and dance is the only thing happening on stage all you have to look at is the dancers then the dancers have to be the full representation of the 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 visual the feeling that they have to be everything they are the entire performance when it comes to working with an artist you are with an ensemble you're you have the band you have lighting you have pyro you have all this other plus the artist all these other different things that you have to uh, blend in well with. You're another instrument among all the other instruments at play. So you can't overwhelm everything else. You can't overwhelm the, the, the artists and their singing. And also if they're going to be doing your choreography, it's a lot easier for the artist to be able to sing the lyrics and have the movement flow with how the lyrics flow. It's hard for them to sing the lyrics and then be super musical and hit every beat at the same time. It's it's almost impossible, especially if they're really actually singing, <laughs> which the artists that I've typically worked with, they're, they're actually singing on that mic. So the choreography has to flow well with the lyrics um, and not just the flow, but it also has to really represent the song well. It has to tell the same story. It has to be in the same universe as the song. And if you're gonna be working with artists, they love that. And whether you're choreographing or you're a dancer, it's important for you to be aware of the bigger picture. The bigger, what are we talking about? What does this represent? Why is this important? Why did they make this song? How is this important to the culture right, right now in this moment? You have to be aware of what's happening outside of just like my arm is out here. <laughs> does that make sense? So. Uh, I, I wish I could hear you respond. I'm, I'm asking that like you can respond to me, but I hope that makes sense. Uh, so that's what I'm really t t uh, tapping into is what is the scene? What is the intention? How can I bring the lyrics to life? And then making sure it reads. It has to actually read. And what's that, what that means is I may feel something in my, like right here in this box that I'm in, but does the energy read? Does the picture read? Does the story read out in the audience and not just for the front row? A lot of people's choreography, not a lot of people's, but a mistake that I see people make who, who choreograph is their, their movement only reads for the people who are in the first few rows. 
and anything read it to the back. <laughs> yes. You got to see it up top. Yes, exactly. If I'm the, the people in the back of the arena, they pay too, and they deserve a show as well. So you need to make sure that that choreography reads for every single person in the room, in the, in the theater, in the uh, arena. So make sure it reads and make sure that your, the intention, what you see, what you're trying to get to in your mind, um, if you're trying to draw out a moment, a lyric, it's not also just about the movement or like how big it is, which is very important, making sure that it's big enough for it to read, but also like, okay, does this, is it, are they going to get it? You know, is the audience going to get what I'm trying to it, it, try to portray? And it, it's not that they have to get every single moment of every step, but overall, like, it, am I accomplishing it? Are they, are they, is my intention reading with the movement that I'm putting out? Um, and then the last thing I want to say in regards to that is study. Be a student. Um, as Michael Jackson put it, study the greats and become greater. I love to just sit, grab some food, and just watch, especially like old tour videos, old Janet, old Michael stuff, uh, early Usher music videos, um, even like different stuff that's not even industry stuff, um, like different, even like contemporary companies, and uh, especially for staging with uh, contemporary companies is amazing. Or it, it'll even be something random. I'll be watching videos that have like 100 views, nobody's really seen, but it's like some kid in Ghana going off and but has all the sauce and all the feeling and and all the character. Like I just, I love to, I love to just study and observe what's going on in the world now and before. And on top of that, I also study myself. I'll, I'll watch what other people are doing let me clarify that because I actually don't watch a lot of, I don't like to be inspired by choreographers. I don't, I don't like to be inspired by people who are doing the same thing that I'm doing. If you're working with artists or whatever, I don't want to watch what you do with your artists unless it was like a decade ago or like years ago um, or, or it, I'll watch like freestylers, stuff like that. I just, I want my choreography to not, be inspired by anybody else's movement that is happening right now, if that makes sense. So I'll study everything else. Um, and then, and then on top of that, what I was getting to is I'll watch my past choreo and see how am I elevated or steal from myself stuff that I love about an old piece. Now, like, how can I remix that? Bring back. There goes my baby. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. That was a good one. Go that watch. There goes one. my baby. That was in the garage, right? That was, that, that was, was Oh, you're talking about that. There goes my baby. Yeah, because I did it twice. Okay, no, I didn't know the second one time. I'm talking about that first one. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So did yeah. you steal from the first one to bring it back? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might need to see that then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I'll go back to my old stuff. Um, to be re-inspired, but also like, uh, I want to always remind myself of who I am in in this space, in this dance world. I want to be clear on that, so I'll watch my old stuff as well. So that's that's what I tap into when it comes to creativity. And, and I would say um, beyond all of that, like I wanted to, if you're creating, like make sure you're creating, you're having something new to say, something new to put in the world. Uh, I think people can get caught up on doing the moves that are approved of the moment the moves that we know we have seen on social media that everybody screams for, gets a lot of attention, likes, whatever, or that you love from other people. But then it just becomes we're just recycling a lot of stuff. And I'm not saying don't do it at all. Like, I'm not saying trends are bad, but like overall, when, when somebody watches your work, it should feel like something unique. Like that is, the, that is your superpower as a creative, is your uniqueness. The things that make you, you. And nobody else, nobody else has your story, your background. Nobody's been exposed to all of the things that you have been exposed to. You have to pull from that, your life, your story, your personal experiences, pull from that and bring all of that into your creations. Um, the things that you do when you're just alone, like uh, just vibing and freestyling, 
the stuff that you might even think is kind of weird, go with it. If you feel it, like go with that kind of stuff. The world needs that uniqueness, that unique voice. Uh, otherwise, it just all becomes gray. Everything just becomes a copy of a copy of a copy. And that becomes really, really boring. And that's the worst thing. That is the very worst thing as a creative that you can do is be boring. Moving on, because uh, I can easily go into a tangent. <laughs> uh, okay, so that was from Taryn Brandt. Thank you so much for that question. I hope it helped. If it did help, comment below. Taryn or anybody listening, if it helped, comment right now and tell me your thoughts. Um, okay, so Amina, Amina Ongrad, Ongrand, Amina Ongrand. Let's go with that. Uh, she says, do you have advice for dancers on networking, finding jobs in the early stages of their careers, especially if they aren't signed to an agency? Really, really good question. Um, and I'm gonna answer this question assuming that the person listening has trained and is ready to be on a job, they're ready to start working. I'm answering it from that perspective. Um, okay, so finding jobs in the early stages of your career is gonna all be about relationships. If you don't have an agency, it's all about relationships. And even if you do have an agent, it's still about relationships. Your relationships are gonna get you more work than anything. It'll get you more work than even your talent will. And I'm not saying talent isn't important. That's truth. It's very true. I'm not saying talent isn't important. It's just that if someone has a relationship with you and you're talented, they'll, they're gonna take you over somebody else who's talented that they don't know, obviously. So, um, and especially if people like working with you, I, I love to work with a dancer that is just a great person to work with and gets a job done. You don't have to be the perfect best dancer in the in, in entire world. I, do, I wanna work with great dancers, obviously, but I'll take somebody who is really good and just like a great person to be around than someone who is the absolute best, but has an attitude, shows up late, is irresponsible, is unprofessional, you know, all that kind of stuff. You're Always insane. willing to take the person with a better attitude who's willing to do something. Yes. Because those who are rigid and have the attitude, as you said, is nobody wants to be around that. And no. you can't coach that. Exactly. You can't instruct that. And I'm diving into that even more. Like more and more, I'm like, it's like at this point, it's like I really don't want to work with too many dancers that are like, that I don't have like some kind of relationship with, that I don't train with me or take my class often or something like that. I want to have some kind of experience. I just had too many bad experiences with people that I just didn't know well or whatever. It, 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 gets, it gets crazy. It gets, you don't even want to know. It, but, um, but yeah, uh, I don't even remember where I was. Okay, so relationships. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's all about relationships, networking. Um, so go to events, go to workshops. All of the events and workshops that happen in your city or near your city, go with the, like go meet people, dancers, choreographers, make sure that you, they're seeing you and they're feeling your presence. Also, like when you go to these workshops and these classes, make sure you're making a statement, make sure you're up in front, make sure you're being seen, make sure they know you exist. A big issue, like, I don't know, some dancers maybe feel like someone's just gonna come find them, like somehow, like, you don't have to have a social media presence. You can dance in the back corner of class and somehow magically someone's just gonna come and search you out out of all the hundreds of dancers, thousands of dancers, however many dancers there are in the existence. You have to want to be seen. You have to, and also just for yourself, where you stand in the room, how you approach your training, your classes, whatever, also subconsciously tells yourself what your worth is if you're always hiding then what are you telling yourself it's hiding in the back of the class does that tell you i'm confident i'm great i deserve to be seen i deserve an opportunity i i, I don't think so so you really got to be conscious of like those little habits that you have what is it doing to you subconsciously is it improving you is it serving you is it helping you grow is it helping you gain more opportunities or is it really hindering you and holding you back? And I know you can come up with all of the excuses in the world about why you may hide or why you may this, but trust me, I've, 
I I have all the same excuses, and I know so many people that have the same, and, and it's just you just got to figure it out, yo. Closed mouths don't get fed. Yes, exactly. And you really like if you love this, if you're passionate about this, you no matter what is an obstacle for you, a challenge for you, I've had them all. <laughs> like you just gotta you gotta push through, and you gotta figure out, you gotta study, like even down to like I had a big problem with anxiety and I had to change my diet and find new vitamins and find different habits, morning habits, night habits, all that kind of stuff to be able to manage that and to kind of calm that down. And I haven't, I used to have bad panic attacks. I, ha I had a, there was an episode in my life where for like a few weeks I was having a bad panic attack every morning, like tremors. I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't want to trigger anybody. Um, but I just want to say that to say that like I had to figure it out and do whatever I could do. I didn't want to be medicated. So I had to, I did a lot of research on all, all the possible natural remedies I could find and it helped a lot. And I haven't, I haven't had a panic attack like daily in probably like the last like couple years. Um, so, so yeah, anyways, uh, I say that to say, figure it out. Um, <laughs> so it's all about relationships. Make sure you're going to events. Make trips out to L.A. I would say either L.A. or Atlanta or Miami, like where a lot of work is going on, where a lot of working dancers and choreographers are. Make those trips. And again, make your presence known. Go show up and show out so that you people can see you and know that you exist. Like make noise. When in, Early in my career, that was my goal. Like top of the year, every year until things started going crazy. I was just like, make noise, like make noise. And I know what that means for me. You got to figure out what that means for you. But it, but what it was for me is just everywhere I go, I'm going for it. And and everything that I I didn't want to rely on, um, you know, uh, when you move to LA, people obviously are trying to figure out: do is it about having an agent? Is it about this? Is it about networking? Is it about taking classes? Is it about putting out videos? It's about all of it. <laughs> do all of it. Do everything until something works. You know. So. Make sure you're making trips to LA. Make sure you are making your presence known. People know you exist. Ha have conversations as best you can. Um, if you're going to like go up to the choreographer at the end, uh, have something, make genuine connections. Yes. Make genuine connections. Have something genuine to say about the class, about your experience about what you wanted out of the class or what you want. If, if you want to work- what you got out of the class. Or what you got out of the class, exactly. Yeah. Like that's an amazing thing to hear as a choreographer, like at the end, what someone got out of your class. And it's something genuine and specific. Yeah, and specific. That exactly. Remember who that person exactly. is. Exactly. You, you make that genuine connection yeah, because they said something that stood out from the other 50 people that came right. up to you in class and right. said the same thing kind of on repeat. So make sure you are making genuine connections and that requires you to actually have your own thought, opinion uh, about whatever you just experienced. And if you want to work with them, it, it's, not a, it's not a problem to say like, yo, I, I would love to work with you one day and even go as far as to say, I would love to work with you one day because X, Y, and Z, you know, because, and I say that because a lot of people, um, a lot of people may, a lot of people come out here and they just are trying to work with anybody. And they, they don't even know really who the person is or what they're about or what they've or done. if they like that person. Or if or they even stuff. like that person or their style. Yeah. They, it's just like, oh, that person's doing jobs. So I need to be over there. Um, and for me, I mean, maybe other people may have a different opinion, but I think you should go where you feel most, like you can be most yourself you be most yourself um but i don't want to i don't want you people to feel like only take classes that where you're killing it no it's more so like if you're genuinely a fan of this person and their work whether you feel like you can do it or not go figure it out and go be in those kinds of spaces and know know what that person does know what that choreographer who they work with what they're doing know what's going on um, 
and instead of just randomly showing up because you heard through the grapevine somebody's I mean, it, name. You could have that intention of just training to train with that person and then you realize whether or not you want to go any further of that. But I mean, just understand, just being yeah. aware of that, like to your point, yeah. at least have an intention yes. of why you're there. Yes. And if you can make it more specific and to the moment, yeah. you'll get more out of it than like, I'm just going to come train today. Yep. No, I'm going to go train in this style, maybe outside my group. Maybe I don't like this person, but I'm going to try it. Maybe I'm going to see why mm -hmm. I don't like it. Just go in there with an honest intention, yeah. and you'll get so much more out of it than yes. just the general, I'm here to train. Yeah, be, be intentional. Like, I can't speak on that enough. Um, and then as far as, like, I, I spoke in other videos on, like, knowing what you want, knowing who you want to work for. Like, I've, I've mentioned that in... A couple of videos that I've posted before and definitely on the last podcast. But before you get here, know where you want to go, who you want, like have a plan. More dancers need to have some kind of plan. And it's not like this thought, whenever people used to tell me, and I trust me, I used to have no plan. I used to just be freestyling my life every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, they said it in, in King Richard multiple times, like if you fail to plan, no, if you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yep. And that's very, very true. A lot of people come here and they just get caught in the wind. They get caught up in all what's going on and they get busy being busy, but not actually going in any direction because they don't have a plan. They just wake up and like, nah, who's teaching today? Right. Oh, I'll go to that. There's no, okay, I know I need to get better at this so that I can get here. And then this will take me to here. Like right. be, have some kind of strategy mapped out it's very important i want to take a page out of your book though because you before you moved to la mm -hmm. you was doing a lot of connecting with people online yes and so i think that that's a, a powerful tip for people who don't live here yeah the many dancers who want to come here because i used to tell people you don't have to live in la to to become well known no kalani and paris both did it without it yep um in the beginning of your career you reached out to a lot of people online yep I and, did. I was sending my videos to everybody and I was not just sending it um, like <laughs> early social media days. I know a lot of people used to like send me videos and be like, can you post this for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not that's terrible. No, no, no. no. That's uh, definitely not the way to go. That's not the but way it's, to go. But to your point, it's like you're reaching out. I think you would you would always ask them questions. and, and Exactly. You, I would ask them like, how could I be better? What should right. I do? Like, so I think that's the wonderful tip that everyone wants to If you don't live in LA yep. and you're wanting to pursue this, know the people who you want. And know, this might take a while. You're not going to get responses yep. right away. And you're going to have to learn it how to tailor your responses properly yeah don't just reach out saying hello right or hi i'm a fan right like we don't have time to waste right but if you are serious about it you find the people that you look up to yes um and it, you can ask critiques but you gotta again put in that genuine work to be supportive show support yeah do all those little things because the, i mean for new dancers and people who want to come out here, I'm sure some are even intimidated. Yeah. But it could be, you can shut that off by simply reaching out to somebody and be like, yo, I really respect your stuff. I want to yep. get better into this. It, now, I don't like asking people to watch my videos or anything like that. But mm -hmm. <laughs> to your point, if you are serious about it and you know that you're in this for the long haul, you, there are ways to ask, you know, hey, can you check this out? To me, my whole point is, yeah. I don't want to ask anybody to check out my work unless it's something I feel that's really relevant, insightful, mm -hmm. but dance creativity, yeah. just create it, put it up, put it out. If it's good, it will catch attention. Yeah. But and, and, and also like, uh, somebody actually messaged me about this the other day. Um, like I, it, pe people love to also see your growth. Yeah. You know, if, if you look like this one day, and then I give you some notes and I see that you actually worked on it. And the next time I see you, you're better. Oh, yeah. And you like, I have a lot of respect for that person because at the end of the day, a really a a a, a dancer I want to have in rehearsal is gonna be someone who's an amazing student and can take notes and apply them and, and make corrections. And make corrections in like as quickly as possible, you know. Some things you gonna have to sleep on it, take a night and come back and fix it, whatever. But in general, choreographers really want dancers who can boom, make the change right there in the moment after they've gotten a note. And, and, and you 
you kind of beat me there, but that was going to be my next thing that I was going to say is like using social media mm, right. to connect with people, to connect with different choreographers, being consistent, making sure they're seeing your name, your face over and over. Um, and, and it's all right. I don't want to say over and over. Like, don't message them every single day. Don't be annoying <laughs> or pestering. Again, yeah. like it's it's about being genuine. You yes. got to be giving first before you start asking for anything really in return. Yeah. Like, yeah. Truth be told, if you're trying to get in, be willing to give a whole lot more before you take. Yes, exactly. Because you, you like if you're not if you're new, you haven't proved anything. Yeah. And everyone who has established relationships have, have shown up and been there for a while. So just yeah. be willing to show up, be willing to give, and you'll get a lot more in return. But you have to be patient and yes. not not be so desperate to be like, give me something now. Right. That's, yes. That'll turn people off. Absolutely. Desperation is, is we all felt it. We've all been there. Yes. But it's Trust. it's not an attractive thing to be around yeah. nobody really wants to be around a desperate person yeah 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 and you don't need to be you're, you're worth more than that you're, absolutely you're absolutely. too valuable to do that to yourself absolutely. to be to be desperate you know um and and i think uh there's also something to be said i well i guess that um that'll take us into this next question about patience because networking is about patience there's some people that I have relationships with uh, that I made relationships with that it didn't become anything till two years later, till five years later. Like you just never know. And then other ones, it was like the next week we did something. You just never know. You just have to put it out there and try to build the relationship as best as possible. Be genuine. Um, and and yeah, it's it's really just like, it's just, waiting it out it's really about building relationships that's, i kind of don't even like the word networking anymore absolutely because that's right it's building it's relationships. relationship building yeah. and you and you gotta figure that out and if you are not good at that in just your general life already practice there first like what are your relationships with your friends like what are you, how do you how well do you start conversations have conversations just in regular life at starbucks at whatever wherever you are um be that is a really that's a skill i really think a lot of people need to really work on is communication and relationship building it will take you a lot further than you may realize and beyond that it just adds to your quality of life as well you know we we need each other i know people on social media love to be like i don't need nobody f everybody <laughs> but at the end of the day you realize how much connections matter. And honestly, I think the people who say that are the ones that are hurting the most and they have to tell themselves that so they can feel better about the situation that they're in. Here's the funny, here's what I think about it. I think uh, happiness is a two-sided coin where one side is progress, mm -hmm. the other side is relationships. Absolutely. And, but success mm -hmm. usually always feels what progress is. So I feel like mm -hmm. to your point when it, people say that they're focused on one side of it, which makes them feel happy yeah. for a moment of time yeah. until they realize they want to spend that with somebody. So you need the relationships. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Relationships. And and a lot of my career in the beginning, you know, well, a lot of my teaching career in the beginning, I was always like traveling places alone, long flights, like 15 hour flights by myself. And I was always excited. I was excited just to travel, you know, or whatever. It, it, it eventually started to take a toll on me. But the reason I even bring it up is at this point in my life, like I really want to travel with the people that I really care about. Like that's what I'm most excited for. You know, uh, I want to go to see all these places again, but now with my friends and with dancers that work with me and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, because, you know, trust me, I've been on the other side of it. I've been, I've had a successful dance career, choreography career, teaching, training career, and just take it from me being on the other side now and having done all of the things uh, and getting to the other side. Um, life is really, yo, it's really about people and the love you have around you, the community you have around you. Um, I'm thankful that I, did, I didn't get so uh, self-consumed. Um, and I'm an introvert, I like to be alone, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, I do love connecting with people and impacting people 
and uh, I love I love to show love to people. Um, so I do have an amazing community around me, and I feel like that's the most valuable thing. That's honestly the thing that makes me feel the most rich more than anything else that I do. So please just take it from me. Get really good at communicating, relationship building, um, and and building a community and connecting with the community around you. And you can start in the comments right now. Make some friends. I'm a still uh, this comedians. <laughs> uh, make some friends in the comments. Connect with people. Share it. Like share like all that kind of stuff. Seriously, like let let's 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 start building some kind of community. I feel like, um, especially since the pandemic, everything is just kind of so spread out and. We spend so much time alone and uh, I don't know, community just feels so much more spread out now. So it's important to, as any way you can, connect with people, especially like-minded people. Um, okay, my, the last question comes in from Abby Coach. Uh, she says, what advice do you have for dancers who struggle with patience when it comes to their career? Okay, really, really, really great question. I see this issue a lot with dancers um, that train with me, take my classes. I talk about this a lot um, because dancers often burn themselves out because they want to get to point B, from point A to point B overnight. They're like, I want it so bad. I want to be there tomorrow. And we usually do that to ourselves. I do it too. We usually do that to ourselves because we're comparing ourselves to somebody else and we start feeling like we're in a race and we need to catch up and we're getting left behind. You're not getting left behind. You have your own path. You have your own journey. Everything that's happening, the way it's happening is happening for a reason. Continue to keep your head down, be focused, put the work in, do the work every single day and trust and know that it's going to work out because you've decided that it's going to work. And that's and one you thing. Did the work. I think that's the thing about mm -hmm. patience. You can ha you can learn to have patience when you've done the work. Yes. Impatient people want to know because they're always thinking there's something ha they haven't done, and sometimes there is. Yeah. But if you're doing all that you can, and even if that means taking that one day off to rest, mm -hmm. you do everything that you can. Yeah. And then it's easier to have patience because you know that you've put in effort. Yes. 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 And the, and that's and that's and that's really well that's not it um i'm gonna dive into it a little bit deeper but in in general that's kind of what we're going to be talking about but fall in love with the process fall in love with the process fall in love with the process the daily grind find a way to love it and if you don't love it figure out what is causing you to not love it what is the issue what's getting in your way what's not serving you and it might be you're trying to do too much or you're putting too much pressure on yourself or you care too much about what other people think. Fall in love with the process. Fall in love with the mistakes, the failures, the challenges. I think that's what really played to my favor when I first came to LA is I was having fun with it. If I, if I didn't make it in an audition, I didn't go home and beat myself up over it and question, should I be dancing? Like, I didn't question my whole career because of a moment. You know, I had decided what my life was going to be. I decided what my career was going to be. So all of the things that were happening in the moment, I just knew it was just for the now. It might be a no for now. It's not a no forever. And it just was lessons. I just took it as a lesson. And I tried to learn from every experience. Um, every audition I went to, I learned a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And I got better and I figured things out. And it's like, oh, okay, my headshot needs to look like this. Oh, I need to stand here I, because I learn best when I stand here and I can see the choreographer and the choreographer can see me when I stand either right behind them and I can focus more because I be having ADD and my mind wanders off. So I know I need to be right behind the choreographer in order for me to be able to pay attention. And okay, how much do I need to sleep the night before? Um, how much, what do I need to eat? How much water do I need to drink? Like I really over and over trying different things with every single audition, I learned what I needed to do mentally what I, what I needed to do like how do I need to think about this how what what do I need to tell myself what kind of conversations do I need to be having with myself um, in this audition to have my best performance like those are the things I figured out after trial and error trial and error trial and error but you don't get there if you go to one audition you get told no and then you go home and you're destroyed because of it you know what I mean so you really have to fall in love with the process I 
I I have my hard days, definitely. But overall, I love the the I love the 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 path that I'm on. Even now to this day, I have new goals, new plan, new vision. And there's challenges and there's obstacles all the time. But at the same time, I'm I'm just happy I get a chance to be able to build something, to create something, to live another day, to be able to connect with people, to be able to train every day, create every day. I, I love all of it. I love all of it, the good and the bad. I love all of it. And I know, and I like the challenges because I know it's going to make me better. And I know when I get on the other side of this challenge, when I beat it, I know that's going to be a, another level of a superhuman of uh, Antoine. So all of those kinds of things excite me. I really love the process. So that allows me to be a lot more patient because I'm not trying to rush through the process because I hate it. You know, I think when people, uh, if you, if you hate class and you hate training and everything, everything's hard on you, you, you want to get to the fun stuff, <laughs> but you need to learn how to have fun in the process. So definitely fall in love with the process. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare. Do not compare yourself to other people. I know, especially with social media, it happens to all of us. We see the highlight reels of everybody's life. It feels like everybody's doing better than us and everybody's got it figured out. And I'm here to tell you, it's not true. We all just doing our best to figure it out every single day. All of us, everybody. I've been around some of the biggest stars. They're trying to figure it out. They're still, they have their challenges on the day to day. Um, they, they just have different challenges than maybe what me, we, uh, me and you may have. But everybody has their different challenges. And I always think about it like this. Like sometimes we get so caught up in like, oh, I want, I want to be them. I wish I could be there. I wish I could have what they have. But then you also got to think, okay, you want what they have because you're seeing all the good. But do will you also take all the bad? <laughs> will you take the illnesses that they have? Will you take the family problems that they have? Will you take like, will you take all of it? Do you really want the life that they have? You you don't really know. The grass is always greener on the other side. So just try to make the best and enjoy what you have and focus and focus on the good, focus on the opportunities. And I'm, I'm gonna be like being completely, completely transparent, like building my company and doing all the things that I'm doing. I see other people either moving faster or their companies ahead or they're going getting jobs that I wish that I had. And, you know, sometimes you, that can, it's when you're so ambitious and you're working so hard, sometimes that hurts. So this, this is something that I have to even constantly remind myself of, you know, I'm not, I'm not, um, uh, I'm not just so above it, uh, that I don't, I don't feel what everyone else feels, you know? And I think you'll find when you start having conversations with anybody that's some of the top people, it, it happens. Um, and I think it's, 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 it's more about how you deal with it when it happens, you know, Des deciding to have that check in and check yourself and be like, yo, relax, you're on your own path. You got your own thing going on. Remember where you're going and none of this is going to matter a year from now, six months from now, two years from now. None of it's going to matter because you're going to be living in exactly what you see. So don't get too caught up in what they, anybody else is doing. And and you just never know, like, you never know what's going on and how they got that up. It, and it doesn't matter. Like, really learn to be happy for other people as well. That really will help you with your patience. If you really can truly see someone else's success and, and be happy for them and actually smile because you know that they're doing well, that, that'll change a lot of things for you. That'll shift a lot for you um, as well. Um, what's for you is for you. You don't want just any opportunity and every opportunity. You want what's right for you. That is the ultimate freedom. That, that is the best way to live, being able to make a living, being who you are, who you truly are each and every single day. And you don't want to get so caught up in trying to chase what other people have because then you have to become more of who they are. So you might try to go down a path that's not even for you, but just because you're trying to compete with somebody. Don't get caught up in the person. Be caught up in what, mind your business, <laughs> your business, what you have going on. Give what you have, everything, everything. You can't give it everything if you're distracted by what everybody else is doing. You have to focus on what you got, what you have going on and give it everything. 
um, and that will help it help uh, help that <laughs> that will help with your uh, patience as well. In retrospect, you'll look back and realize why things worked out the way they 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 did. There's a lot of things I look back on my career when I went to this audition and I and I got cut, but yo, that would have put me on tour with that artist for a year, and in that year, something else that was even better for me actually happened. So I'm actually glad I didn't get booked on that job because it would have took me away from what it is better for me. So really appreciate the, th the nose. You need to start being thankful for the nose because you don't know what it's saving you from. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps with being patient. I feel good about that. How you feel about it? Yeah, I think it was all good. Boom. That's our three questions for hashtag ask troop for today's uh, daily challenge. We need to figure out a way to hold them accountable. Like, I want to know if they did it. Actually, let's do this. Once you've done the challenge, come back in the comments and let, the, let us all know what you did and how it went. I think that'd be amazing for anybody in the future, a year from now, five years from now. Hashtag challenge, challenge completed. I like that. How, hashtag challenge completed. Let's do that. Um, yeah, get in the comments and, and let us know how it went. But today's daily challenge I want you to reach out to somebody you look up to and let them know that you would love to work with them and then give them a genuine compliment or genuine feedback or let them know what, how you genuinely, honestly feel and why you want to work with that person. Like what makes them special to you? What is unique about them that makes you connect to them? What, what makes it resonate with you? That's gonna be my challenge. Be bold. You never know what will happen. I've, I've done this many times in my life. That's how I got many opportunities and connected with people that I thought would be close to impossible to connect with. It's just by taking a chance and reaching out. And that's a new connection that I formed that has altered my life. So that's going to be my challenge for you. And we're going to leave on that note. Hold on, can I say one caveat go to that it, challenge? Go for it, go for it, say your thing. Just, just thing. one thing to say, like I agree with you and I think that's uh, the greatest thing to do. The only thing I'm gonna say as a little asterisk to be uh, prepared because if you're, if I guess be prepared if something happens because I did this one time Yes. and I made the mistake of sending this message yeah. while I went out of town Ooh. and he hit me, it was fly. Oh fly. wow! I, I reached out to Fly and I was yeah. like, "Yo, fly uh, let me come, let me come film for you anytime, da 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 da, because I want to help maybe behind the scenes of some stuff." But I was going out to Arizona and I didn't say that in my message. So let, stay, you know, state where you are first because yes. my mistake was was doing the reach out and saying I want to work with you, and he said yes. But I wasn't prepared, and because I didn't say it in the first message, Ooh. I came off unprepared not uh, yeah, not right yeah. so so what we're saying it's it's useful but be prepared or if you're not in the state say yeah. that front front don't tell somebody hey i want to work with you da, 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 and yeah. you're like nowhere to be around or, yes. or available to work because right. he called me up on it and was like oh you ready to go pull up to the studio tomorrow Ooh. during i think chris is one of chris's rehearsals Ooh. For four hours, and we'll chat it up. And I, Chris, as in Chris Brown, yeah. And I blew it because I was not in town, and I looked foolish by saying, "Oh well, I'm uh. actually out of town." And that, you know, that was on my fault for not saying it from the get go. Yo, I love your work. When I, I should have said something like, "Yo, once I get back into town, I'm right. out of town at the moment." Yeah. But when I get back in town from visiting family, I'm ready to go. Right. Like if if you're gonna be in LA, state it. So, you know. Yeah. Reach out. Be prepared, um, but actually, like, be prepared in case something happens because you, these things happen. Like, so we're saying right now that yeah. you don't know. Sometimes they may not see the message. It might right. go in that request folder for a while, yes, and it might take a while. But if you if it catches their attention yeah. and they're in that time and space and they say yes, yes, is it? I mean, as people say, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yep, and you have to be prepared. Don't yep. try throw out the opportunity and you not be prepared because then it will shoot you in the foot. I'm yeah. terrified <laughs> to go to ever message Fly Styles ever again. I need to meet him in person and apologize and let him know what <laughs> I'm about. But like, don't That's shoot yourself in note. the foot. Yeah, it's yeah. it's just a small, because, yeah. you know, it's one of those things that we, we want to come off 
genuine and I guess intelligent of the matter, like Absolutely, being yeah. aware, like me throwing out services when I'm not in town to right. like step up to that. Right. Not a good move. It's not a good look on me because then I look unprofessional. Right. Right. But as as this challenge is, let them know who yeah. you are, where you're from, where yep. you're at. Yep. And and just just make the general connection. Yeah. Make the genuine connection. Yes. With them. Yes. Yes. And, and then also I wanted to just say, like, be prepared also if, if they don't respond or they yeah. don't see it. That's fine. And don't I think get hurt. It's more about you getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Doing something that feels kind of like out of the norm for you. And taking the initiative. Yes. And taking initiative and putting something out in the world. Uh, and, and if they don't respond, keep going. Keep it pushing. Reach out to another person that you look up to. Or just wait. You just never know. But the challenge is more for you. More for you. You can't worry about what anybody else is doing. Yeah. The challenge is for you to show up and, and take, a, take a chance on yourself. The challenge for the challenge is you have to have an intention, no expectation. Boom. We out. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Troop Podcast. I'll see you again next week.